everyone, it's the 5th of July. If you remember back in April, I sold some uh, pots up with some potatoes, which the compost was supplied by B&Q. A few different varieties, well, brands, um, to put to the test against each other, I suppose, to see um, how they get on. The variety of the potato was swift, so it was kind of April the 1st, so they've had like 95 days, something like 96 days. So they should be more than ready. Obviously, some of the tops here, you can see, have really sort of died off, which is a sign that they're ready, you know, when they yellow off. Even though first earlys, you know, can be ready from, you know, 10 weeks. Um, so it just depends on how, how big you want them. In these, I'm expecting there could be a few small ones and some big potatoes, possibly. Obviously, you know, there's peat, they're peat free. And as someone had asked, well, a few asked last year about if I was going to do it again this year about putting my own into it. So this part of the end here is my own compost. So we'll see how it's performed against these. Um, remember how they had no, no feed in the beginning. When I first planted it up, there was no fertilizers put in, I, I don't think so. Um, they've been fed twice since on a basic general tomato feed. Um, not been fed for the last two weeks. The, the thing I found with this, this one um, was the first to really get a good growth on the top. It does dry out quite fast. Um, we've all got labels in. So this one is the uh, Westland Multipurpose Compost with Johnny's. Uh, this one here is the uh, Westland All Plant. This one here was the uh, Miracle Grow Premium. I think it's like a moisture control on that. And at the end there was a Verve uh, container and basket compost, obviously my own, which is just made of basic kitchen scraps and kind of allotment leftovers, you know, so all the plant tops, like from these tops, they'll go into my compost heap, which will make compost for next year. So it is a good thing to make your own compost and, um, you know, and, and kind of supplement, you know, any, any that you buy. Because uh, some people are struggling with the peat free with it running dry. And I can understand, you know, um, it's a little bit tricky to work with in some aspects, but it's just the way it's going to go. Because um, we've got only allowed peat free now in the UK. Uh, most places, there are probably some old stock knocking around, so it's, it'll just take time for them to find a decent substitute um, to deal with the water retention. Um, there could be other aspects, as you don't know what feeds in it originally. You know, obviously, if you get more um, top growth, you know, because they all have an MPK, which is like your nitrogen and potassium and phosphorus and all that sort of thing. So you need to know. Um, what's in there but I mean if you get if you apply a general fertilizer like bloodfish and bone meal it kind of evens them out but um, it's just something we're gonna have to learn you know learn to actually work with and I think we'll, we'll be fine you know there the, the should be a crop watering wise as I said they've been watered well all pretty much the same but I say especially more so this one has required um, a lot more water um, and I mean a lot more because it was kept drying out and um, cause I kept coming to the pots and I'd sort of rock them and I think it's gone really light, really quick. Um, so, but we'll see if it's affected. It shouldn't have done because I've actually, you know, I've, I've upped the water on that. The best one regarding watering was my own. That took a, a long time to dry out. I didn't water it for a long time, but I'm gonna pull them all out today. I'm gonna weigh each pot. I say, I have no idea um, how they'll do. They should have all had the same because they're all sighted here next to one another, so they get the same amount of sun. You know, as the sun comes over the sky and sets over there, so they get a good, you know, from this side and obviously direct from over there. So you get ample light, they're not shaded or anything like that. So uh, there should be a crop. Um, I did harvest some a little while ago, which was from an earlier sowing, uh, which was very poor. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't happy with that at all. Uh, so fingers crossed, it's, uh, these will do better. So we'll, uh, we'll get them all lifted up, drag down the garden, and we'll, uh, we'll start tipping them out and weighing them. All right, I've brought the potatoes down. There's the five tubs here. I've set a little tripod up with some scales on. It's already, I've, I've put the bucket on it, so it's already kind of reset to zero. I hope you can hear me okay, because it's quite blustery today. I've tried to tuck down below the fence line, um, but obviously, you know, um, it was, it was raining earlier on, the sun's come out, so I thought I need to take this opportunity to do this today, because um, we are forecast for rain for a few days now. So I'll take the tops off and keep all the tops separate and the straw, because I did mulch them with some straw, um, and that can go straight in the compost heap. 
I've no qualms about anything, you know, because you get blight and that. I don't anything. Um, I compost absolutely anything that's you know plant based. Uh, it doesn't doesn't bother me at all. Once you've had time to go through the, the co you know the whole composting process, it will be fine. You know, but if you uh, if you're unsure, you know it's it's your own personal choice. That's fine. Just leave it out. You know, it's fine. I personally never had any real issues with um, things passing on, as long as it's had time to uh, to break down. All right, so just take the tops off. I'm going to have to try and uh, keep this area as clear as I can. So as I empty one, I'm going to have to fill the pot back up with the uh, compost. You know, don't throw your compost away. It can be reused, you know, as a spent compost. Um, get yourself some more seed potatoes. Put some uh, feed in there. And pop some more potatoes in in about a month. You know, you've got some late new potatoes for around Christmas time and that. They'll be ready well before then, but you can leave them actually in the compost. Great if you've got, uh, you know, somewhere that's sheltered from the rain to do it, because it, it prevents blight getting in. There's plenty of information online on uh, blight. Um, it's, it's kind of an airborne disease. It lands on the foliage doesn't do any harm until it's washed in with water. This is why you've got to avoid getting your plant foliage wet, which is nothing you can do about that, to be honest, um, if you're uh, out in the open and it's raining. So uh, you have to excuse me, there's some sirens going on somewhere. We'll, we'll crack on. I'll just try and get the, the bulk of this stuff off the top. There's a little tiny one that's about the size of a peanut. I'm not going to bother with that. So this one is... This is the miracle grow. I will uh, watch this back myself and uh, I'll put all the actual weights and everything in the uh, description below, along with links to these composts, providing they're all still available, should be. Um, so I can see a couple of potatoes at the top here, which is a good sign, but you want to see them kind of spread around the side. A little lump there in the shape of, sort of a few big ones. Which is okay if you like the bigger potatoes, but if you just want to grow small salad ones, I'd probably harvest these um, around sort of the 80 day mark, really. But we shall see what we've got. Just 30 litre tub. But uh, nothing around the sides here, which you usually do get. So um, there'd probably be a clump in the middle somewhere, hopefully. They just break the root ball apart. Some quite good sized spuds there. You know, a lot bigger than, I mean, I'd be quite happy with them that size and that size you know they're quite big for a, a first early but regarding weight what i'll do i'll, uh, I'll pop them straight in the bucket because i can just weigh them up nice and clean no scab or split There's a, that's the original sea potato You know, bearing in mind in these, I think it was four sea potatoes per pot. You know, so don't be frightened to save the, some of these if you want for your own sea potato. As long as they look nice and clean, shouldn't be any problems. There's the other sea potato. Right in there. I'm only wearing gloves because. Uh, the old sea potatoes can be a bit soft and mushy sometimes, so just saves uh, getting that all over your fingers. Oh, a couple of tiny ones that are marble size, I'm not bothering with them. Just something that's kind of usable. So even that size, you know, they're a great size to sort of make yourself a potato salad with. But uh, immediately, uh, a lot better than my first. Uh, yield that was uh, it was quite a chunky compost cooler time of year um, not quite as many days even though I did have a pot I left for a little bit longer and um, it was no better at all so I think it was just I don't know it was just it was my own seed potato but that shouldn't really equate to any issues it's cooler time of year I think and uh, it's not as not as productive, so I was quite disappointed with that. I think that was the uh, good home 
multi-purpose, which has been all right with everything else. But this stuff is nice and fibrous, this. Oh, it's quite like clay, that uh, coconut stuff. But uh, yeah, I quite like this. It does dry out, but not as bad as the, uh, the other one. I think it has got some sort of moisture, con moisture control in it. You know, obviously fibrous stuff does hold moisture. Right, so I've got to put all that back in this tub. Instead of uh, editing all this bit out, you can see it in real time. You know, if you're new to gardening, potatoes are relatively trouble free and quite easy to grow. And they're a good one for little kids involved. It's a bit like a treasure to them, especially when they just put one in. You know, it's even a small sort of, you know, bucket sized pot will be fine. A few holes in the bottom for drainage. You know, it's a bit like put one in and then go back to it ten weeks after. You know, in the summer holidays or something like that when they're off school and they tip it out and there's loads more. You know, it's like a proper little treasure hunt for them. Because they've they planted one in, you know. Probably put two in a bucket size. Right, let's see what we are weight wise on this. That's Five pound, 12 ounces, which is kind of what you want. You want something like, you know, um, a pound and a half really per seed potato is kind of good. You know, but that's, that's you know, not a bad yield, that. I'm happy with that. So I'll put the label back in there. Let's tip these on top of that for now. Let them dry off for a, an hour or so in the sun, and then you can kind of dust the compost off on your hand and you can put them into a, a sack if you want and they'll, they'll store for a little while. Alright, what's next? Let's try this Westland one because it is good compost. You know, it's highly rated. I don't know what they are price wise. Um, should imagine, you know, a big difference in prices. So we shall just see. And these tops are well died down on these. But it was the first one, it, it, it really grew like a clap as I thought, oh good god, you know, it's getting massive this one. I thought, you know, it's gonna win by a mile, but never really go off the tops. Because sometimes, it, like I say, it could just have like excessive nitrogen in there, so you'll get a lot of top growth. But, you know, you want the potash for down the bottom. You know, so they, they do need nitrogen in the early stages, though. Obviously, as that top dies down, it will pull some energy back into the tubers. So this is the uh, Westland multi-purpose with John Innes. Well, you can use grass clippings, tear up top there. Grass clippings out there, you know, for mulch. It just helps retain a bit of moisture, because this one has been a troublesome one to keep moist. It's okay today, you know, because we watered a couple of days ago and we had a lot of rain. But it has been tricky to uh, to maintain the moisture in this one. Well, got a bucket ready. Let's have a look at what we got. Similar sort of thing, nothing really bulgy on the sides. Uh, good yield inside. No, a couple of little markings, but nothing, nothing bad. Because some compost are quite rich and dark. They can, look like, um, they just stain outside. I notice that with my own compost sometimes because I, I put tea bags in it. So um, I think sometimes if it's nestled against a bit of a tea bag, it's not broken down fully. It kind of stains it. 
a lot more smaller ones in this. You know, which could be part of um, not having adequate, you know, consistent water supply. But, uh, but yeah, so I'd, I'd say, you know, it's a good, you know, uh, half a watering can every couple of days at least. You know, a couple of litres. I'll see potatoes out. It is a good idea, you know, if you're going to use this compost again, you know, uh, lay it out to, to dry out a little bit and just go through it again, just to get any little volunteer potatoes out. You know, because um, if there is anything wrong with the potatoes, um, it might be fine for eating, but if you get a volunteer potato, that could carry something straight onto your follow-on crop. So it is a good idea to try and get as many of the volunteers out as you can. Sometimes you can lay the compost out on a, on a patio or anything like that and uh, the birds will come down and have a kick about in it to get rid of any bugs or out like that. That's all we're going to get out of that. I was half expecting this one to be <coughs> the better one. You know, the real unpredictable one is my own. I have no idea how that's going to go on. Wasn't really ready. Hadn't had a lot of time. That's all I'm going to get out of that one. So all I'll probably do with this, you see, is I'll just mix it all together. Bag it up. You, know, you can sow seeds in it, you know, things, you know, the bigger seeds, but uh, if it's had time, you know, you put it in it, add it to your compost bin, it's fine. Right, you know, no problem there. And when you apply more things to your own compost, it will just refeed it that way and reinvigorate it. Compost is uh, it's a bit like a tin of food. There's only so much life in it, so much energy. You know, so you have to keep having feed to it, otherwise it just becomes, you know, depleted. It's, it will house, you know, plants, but it won't house the feed you need to put that in. So all compost, everything depletes unless if you give back. It's a bit like uh, growing in the ground, really. If you keep taking and taking and never give back, you will deplete all the uh, resources. So you do need to give back, which we're doing whatever. Because obviously these plants have taken up nutrients from this and you put them in your compost, so they will have nutrients in it, which will give it back to ground. So it's an old rule, you know, you can take something, but you've got to give a bit back. All right, let's see what these weigh. Was five pound twelve the other ones what have we got here a little bit more of that about six pounds eight six six and a half pounds that I should have a pen with me I can write it on the back but I say I'll put it in a description anyway now crop yield like that you know it's a it's a good yield like I say, you, you don't really want below one pound per sea potato. Right, uh, what's next? What's this one? Quite heavy this one, found a label. It should be in here somewhere. This is a Westland oil plant. Another good compost I've used before, you know. Um, I do prefer, it's a New Horizon one, and um, the old plant, because they do the old veg, I think, as well, which I've 
I use. I've currently got my peppers growing in that, um, just to see how they get on in it. It is a preference from last year's trials. You know, the peppers did like it, but generally this year, peppers have been struggling, so it's not really a fair challenge, even though they're perking up. But we'll follow them through the season, see how they get on. This one wasn't too bad for drying out. It's got quite a lot of grit in this. You know, and I found last year, like, lonely composted better for the potatoes, but we'll see how we get on, because they're all quite fibrous, and that's the peat free. Because I did at the beginning, I put some grass clippings at the bottom of each tub, just to stop it tipping through the holes, because I did add more holes. Um, these are like 25 mil or 20 mil holes. Um, I added more holes, so, you know, it's got holes at the side here. They've not been buried. It will be better if you can bury the potato, the pot up to here or something, so that roots can tap out. It's a, it's a big spud there at the side. I mean, you can use that for a jacket. Not quite as many on first look, but, uh, like I say, they'll, they'll veer off. They are quite tucked right near the sea potato, these. Quite low down. Weight can be deceiving, you know, if you've only got a few, but if you've just got big ones, you know. Sea potatoes pretty much disintegrated in that. Like a little like chafer grub in it. It's not harmed any of the, uh, the new spuds. Wood lice can be a bit, of, a bit of a pain sometimes, you know, especially if your compost has run dry, same as ants, you know, if you keep your compost moist, it should deter, you know, splitting that little one, but I don't think that's any real issue, that's just down to going a bit dry and then having a big downpour, I think they just, uh, they grow and then they, they stop growing, all of a sudden they get a downpour and they suddenly try and grow again, but it can't really expand so it splits the skin. Obviously these grass clippings that I put at the very bottom, they're all going to stay in it. They'll just all add a bit of nitrogen back to it. But uh, that's it for that one. Not quite as many in that. Trying to uh, remember what weights we've had with a five, twelve, and six and a half. So far. But, yep, some seed potatoes will fail, you know, rot off for some reason, but. I'm not bringing that into the equation, they all had four in. They're all healthy seed potatoes. All planted the same way. They were, it was very wet, all the compost were quite wet. When I planted them, so I was a little bit concerned at the start, but that's why I didn't water them for a while. So what we've got in this one. Ooh, that's three and a half pounds. That's, you know, enough half. Well, so the old plant has not really done it. It's got some nice potatoes, but uh, nowhere near the yield of uh, those two at the back. So just goes to show you do these things. Um, you know, I mean, next time it might be something worth trying, like a couple of tubs of each. But, uh, I'll ask B&Q if they want to do anything next year. 
you know, there's anything you want me to try that B and Q stock. Um, I can only ask. All uh, right, what's this one? That's a Verven uh, container one. This one's my own. I'll do my own. Eager to find out. I'm not just going to say it's going to be brilliant, but free compost made from basically what I'm sticking in this pot behind me, really. It costs you, costs you nothing, really, apart from uh, some potatoes, sea potatoes. It has sunk down quite a bit, this one. I'd say it wasn't fully, fully ready. Quite chunky as well and everything, but oh, homemade compost. There's a couple of sea potatoes, well, a couple of potatoes on top there. The light's got a little bit, little bit green. See in there. Right, let's see how we get on. So, I mean, there's nowhere near the depth of the compost. You would lie, in it? Tight. Well, still a result, you know. Uh, get them out. Clean as well. It is satisfying when you can get it. You know, a, it doesn't have to be a brilliant yield, but you just get an okay yield if you're happy with it. You know, and you think, well, you've seen it happen before your own eyes. You know, the things you've put in your compost heap, you know, your veg offcuts and food scraps and that. It's a cardboard and twigs and that what it becomes. Everything goes back to ground. You know, it's not going to be a massive view, but... It's uh, not a bad bump. You know, so... Uh, it was... Yeah, I suppose it's pretty... It was a fair thing for somebody to ask, like, you know, put some homemade compost into the challenge, so it's quite crumbly. Well, if you bag this up, it'd be lovely stuff next year to use for seedlings. You know, you put it through a sieve and that, add a little bit of uh, topsoil to it, something like that, it'll be great for that. I think that's about it in there. Plastic container would do okay because it is a container. I know that one was quite wet and it did hold water quite well. Like I say, that one, the uh, not the, the um, Westland one, um, needed a lot more sort of maintenance to keep it moist. That's the only downside to it. Um, smells quite funny in the bag. It smells almost slightly chemical wise, but it's not, it's just, I suppose, just that dark earth sort of smell. Wood. But I suppose, you know, if you're concerned about what you're growing things in, if you use your own, at least you know what's got into it. But, you know, um, always expect your own not to perform as good as other things. Yeah, there's a good couple of inches less of compost in there and I pack it down, really. It's down to about here. Nevertheless, we've got a crop. I don't know what it'll weigh, but we'll give it a go. That's four pound, 10 ounces. That's well, not, not the worst one, not the best one, but it's still a crop. And it costs nothing. So it just goes to show you that uh, compost you made yourself will work whether you've hot rotted it, 
or posh compost heap or just had a pile in the corner of the garden where you just pile stuff up and throw an old bit of carpet over it and just give it time let the worms and the bugs do the thing and then uh, you put it to use then all in there actually I'll put all the weights in the description down below along with the uh, the links to these composts that I've used. Verve container and basket. I have used Verve compost many, many times for many years. You know, the uh, multi-purpose and I always found it pretty reliable, to be honest. It wasn't the finest of stuff, but put it through a sieve for seeds, leave it as it is for mature plants. And potatoes, and it always did all right. But that wasn't the peat free version. Obviously, everything's peat free. So, nothing hanging out the sides. But, uh, yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. That's, they are lovely and clean. worms in this one as well. This, I like this one for what's in it, it's just, I don't know, it's, it's a bit more like a natural compost. It's, it's got fibres in it because chunky compost doesn't put me off. I think it's just as gardeners get a bit, a bit fussy. You know, they like that fine tilth. Where in the wild, you know, woodlands do great. And there's nothing thin and fine about that. It's just all the branches and twigs that drop on the floor and rot down. And the seed just lands straight on top. It's rained on and it, it does all right, you know. So I don't think plants are too particular. As long as they can put a root down in it and it holds a bit of moisture, it will grow. I've, I've actually done it before now where I've got a tea bag that's been sort of used, let it dry out and I've pricked a couple of holes in it and used it a bit like one of the peat pockets and yeah it germinated, a brassica seed it wasn't very healthy because it was just pure tea with too many tannins in it but it germinated and it grew a little bit and I thought well just goes to show they're not too you know you can get away with growing things in all sorts I think that's all we're going to get out of that. I'm going to be uh, having some of these potatoes for my tea. So. This harvest is completely outdone the last harvest. It was, it, it was shockingly bad after the last one. I don't know why. So there's my own potatoes in there. It doesn't matter this to fry it up and do the thing. So that's that one done. Give it away in now. It's nice and spongy, this stuff. What I like about it. Right. What have we got? Five pound exactly. So, you know, there's. It's been alright, you know, I mean, obviously the lunch produced least has been the old plant. You know, and then uh, and then make me own, but you know, it's still it's still a good yield. You know, I think it's it's a bit. It's not great getting like under, you know, like well, three and a half pound potatoes from three seed potatoes. It's all right, 
but it's not it's not the best other than that they're all you know these two obviously court trumps you know that just under six pound just over six pound um price wise i don't know probably i, I was expecting miracle grow was quite a pricey one i think there's only 40 liters in that bag the westland multi-purpose for john innes um I say price wise i'll put the links below you can check them out and uh but well, that's the uh, potato comparison, you know, checking the compost and my own thrown in the equation as well. So, I uh, hope it's been helpful and a bit of a guide on, you know, um, different things you can try. Like I say, you could try these same composts and get different results. Environment and weather is a partially of an equation of, of how you grow things. It's, it's all the elements thrown into one. But to do this, I've kind of had a mo They're all sown the same day. Um, We've been put in the same place. The only thing I've had to do is obviously the, the Westland one demanded a lot more water, otherwise the plant would have given up. It got to a point where I thought, um, should I stop applying so much water to this to keep it alive because it kept limping, you know, and going limp. But the others, you know, they did okay. Um, they were kind of all fairly even. Um, but yeah, the dairy too needed more water. But obviously the the Westland multipurpose needed a lot more. It did dry out quite a lot. Um, but uh, so the results are there, you know, um, it's as honest as I can give really. You know, none of them are bad. They all, they all grew something. I got a crop of all of them. Like I say, this, this old plant one, you know, I've, I've used it before and it's done all right. You know, it's, it's not bad. You know, like I say, it just depends what you can afford. And if you've got no money at all, don't be afraid to make your own because it will work. And if you can afford it, yeah, get what you can, you know, um, look at as many reviews as you can and get the best that money can buy. You know, that's that's the road you want to go down. But th for me, the garden is um, is about quantity and quality um, with least expense. That has to be a, a big drive. You know, it's got to be the quantity that you can grow and the quality of it. And is it cheaper to do that than to buy it well obviously it's healthier because when you grow things in a natural organic way um there's a lot more goodness goes into it than a lot of mass production or mass grown things it's kind of floating on water instead of the chemicals but at least if you know you've grown it you know where it's been you know where it's come from and it's had the time and the natural sunlight it, it's a healthier plant which obviously then will in turn healthier things to you um but I hope that's helped and a uh, big thank you to B&Q again for being involved in this, donating the compost for me to put to the test. And I said to them, you know, if it's a bad one, it will show, I, I, I can't um, state any, any, anything false. If a compost performs poorly, then it's going to be, it's going to be known. And they were fine with that. There's no crowds. I said, whatever the results, it is what it is. You know, and they just, um, they, they couldn't be more helpful, to be honest. They were really helpful. And, um, the staff were great you know and um some of them were really knowledgeable i'm going to chat with them and that so some of them knew the stuff and it was uh yeah it's a pleasure doing this with them again so um all i can do is you know if, if there's anything you want me to test that being qd whether it's anything whether it's you know compost seeds or even tools or anything like that to do with gardening all i can do is ask them and forward the message on so uh any comments because I will send them the link to this video. So any comments you want to put across the B&Q, um, you know, I'll, I'll ask them to read the comments, um, put them in, and I will, um, I'll make sure they see them. So thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time. See you now. Bye-bye.